Hello, my name is Keshwani. That's K E S H W A N I. Keshwani. I have been solving math problems for GRE out of this book here. Practicing to take the GRE general test, 10th edition. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. The problem that I'm about to solve is the one that you will find in exam number 2 on page number 208, number 13. Let's take a look at it. Number 13 is not that bad. About two-thirds of the people who took this exam got it right. 66% of the people who took the exam got it right. Which is not the same as, uh, which is not, as, uh, which is not uh, uh, what we can say about the next two questions, the 14th and the 15th. Uh, four fifths of the people who took the exam, 80% of the people who took the exam got 14 and 15 wrong. But this one was not that bad. Only third of the people missed it. Let's take a look at it. And they want you to compare this angle Y, which is here. They want you to compare Y versus 70. Let's take a look. This is number 13. So let's get going. They tell us, the important, important piece of information that they tell us is that it is X is less than 90. Well, if x is less than 90, then this guy here, let's call it z. This guy here, the angle z, say for example, you see, if I tell you that this is less than 90, if I tell you that this is less than 90, let's say this is 80, then this guy has to be more than 90. Less than 90, this is how we write less than 90. 90 with a negative sign on the top. If this, this angle is less than 90, then this angle has to be more than 90. For, forget about the, well, don't worry about the fact that these, these angles have names, they are called something, that don't worry about them. One is called the acute angle, one is called the obtuse angle. Uh, there, there are some other terminologies in the geometry. You don't need to know them. Nobody's going to give you extra credit if you do know them. Just realize the fact that the straight line is 180 degrees. And therefore, if I have a straight line, and if this angle is less than 90, then this one would have to be more than 90. Uh, if this is less than 90, that's all. So let's continue then. So if x is less than 90, then this guy z would have to be more than 90. Then z is more than 90. That implies, rather, if x is less than 90, that implies the z has to be more than 90. If we know that z is more than 90, then y would have to be less than 70. Why, why is that? Why does y have to be less than 70? Because this guy plus this guy, if this is more than 90, then some of these two, 20 plus y, has to be less than 90. Because all together in a triangle, the three angles have to add up to 180. So if z is more than, one, uh, if z is more than 90, that implies, that implies, That implies that if z is more than 90, then y plus 20 has to be less than 90. y plus 20, this angle plus this angle. Which also implies that y is less than 70. That's all. y is less than 70. And since this is 70, therefore the answer is b. And if you find all this confusing, if you find all this confusing, the simplest and the easiest way to do the problem is to just make up numbers, plug in numbers, which is what I'm going to do here. Look, I'm going to plug in numbers here with a, with a different marker here. Let's, let's do the red, red markers. I'm told that x is less than 90, so I'm going to make up a number here for, nine, uh, for uh, angle. Let's pretend that x is 80. Well, if x is 80, then z here, this z here would have to be 100. Z would have to be 100 because 100 plus 80 is 180. This is a straight line. 
If z is 100 and this is 20, 20 plus 100 is 120, and since sum of all the angles in the triangle has to be 180, therefore, that's only, that's only in the event that if z, is less, z equals 100. We do not know what z equals. I'm just making up a number for z, plugging in. If z equals 100, then then y would have to equal 100 and then we have 80 left over this is 20 so y would have to be 60 you see y is 60 less than 70 you see this is 70 that the answer is b and that's all it is so there are there are two ways you can do this problem you can plug in numbers and solve it through that or you can just think logically just think logically if this guy if this guy x is less than 90 if x is less than 90 then z which they do not which they do not show in the picture here, I just gave this angle a name, then the z would have to be more than 90. Where, where we go? So this is our first work. If x is less than 90, if x is less than 90, which is what we're told here, that implies that z would have to be more than 90. This is my z. And if z is more than 90, then that implies that y plus 20, y plus 20, these two quantity has to be less than 90. These two angles cannot also be equal to 90 or more than 90 because that will be over 180. Because sum of all the three has to be 180. That implies that y, whatever y is, has to be less than 70. In other words, the sum of this angle and this angle has to be less than, less than 90. That's all. That's it. I don't want to, I don't want to keep talking about it over and over again. Uh, I hope you. I hope you 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 found it helpful. If you wish to get hold of me for personal private tutoring or to purchase the solution manuals to these problems or for any other aspect of the GRE, go to my website at www.prep.prep.for4gre.com and send me an email. All right. Because sometimes if the problem is quite straightforward and you try to explain it. Uh, still, then you end up sometimes explaining too much. I think which is what I ended up doing here. I ended up explaining too much. It's actually not 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 a nasty problem at all. Two thirds of the people got it right. I don't know why it showed up at number thirteen. It, it does not qualify to be number thirteen. It's not that bad. The answer is B. That's all. Anyway, thank you.